after our recent podcast episode on Buffett Tanks on the Homeowners Q&A podcast, a lot of you reached out saying that you're still a little bit fuzzy on how buffer tanks actually work and why they can be inefficient for heat pump systems. In the UK domestic market, the most common buffer tanks used are four port buffers. So today I'm going to try and simplify that process for you. So here is how a four port buffer tank actually works. First off, picture a big metal cylinder that holds water. That's your buffer tank and in most domestic applications it's usually between 40 to 100 liters in size. The key to making it work properly is how it's piped so here's the basic setup. Hot water from your heat pump flows into the top of the buffer tank and that same hot water then flows out of the top and heads off to your radiators or underfloor heating. Meanwhile, the cooler water from your heating system after it's done warming up your rooms comes back into the bottom of the buffer tank and that cooler water flows out of the bottom and goes back to the heat pump to get reheated. Now here's the magic word that makes buffer tanks work, stratification. Basically, this means the hot water stays at the top of the tank and the cooler water sinks to the bottom. This separation is crucial because it stops hot water and cold water from mixing, which is called distortion or blending. If they mix, you're basically wasting heat. So why do people say that four port buffer tanks can be inefficient? That all comes down to pressure balance. Imagine your heat pump is pumping hot water into the buffer tank, but the heating systems return water, the cooler stuff coming back from your radiators, is flowing into the buffer tank at different pressure. If those two flows aren't perfectly balanced, the water starts swirling around inside the tank. That's when blending happens, which is basically when hot and cold water mix, cooling things down inside that buffer tank unnecessarily. But I'll let Brendan explain this again. On the secondary side of a buffer tank, there is no flow meter. How do we know if we're getting enough flow into the property? We don't. We have no idea. That's the problem with a buffer. If you've got a proper flow meter on the other side, on both sides of the buffer so that you can balance it, different story altogether. But in general, there's no flow meter on the secondary side of the buffer tank. You have no idea what the flow rate actually is. It could be a quarter of what you require. You don't know. If you've got any questions about heat pumps, then you need to join the Renewable Heating Hub forums. You can connect with other homeowners, share experiences, and get advice on heat pumps and renewables. Sign up today and be a part of the conversation. Link in the description. But the complications with buffer tanks don't end there. Sadly, there are a lot of carboy installers in the UK who don't pipe the buffers correctly and the piping alone can kill inefficiency before the system even starts running. Here's a diagram provided to us by a homeowner from the Renewable Heating Hub forums with their setup. In this setup, the hot water from the heat pump enters the buffer tank at the top, but leaves to the heating circuit at the bottom. The return water from the heating circuit then re-enters the buffer tank from the top left, and exits the heat pump at the bottom right. This kind of setup leads to significant blending and distortion because the hot and cold water are constantly crossing paths inside the tank. Our own heat pump system that we had installed six years ago before we knew anything about heat pumps and buffer tanks has an equally dreadful piping setup. The hot water from the heat pump enters the buffer tank from the top left, it then flows into the heating circuit from the bottom right. The return water from the heating circuit re-enters the buffer tank from the bottom left before it finally exits the buffer tank to the heat pump from the top right. This kind of setup is a recipe for maximum blending and inefficiency. So to get a better idea of how much heat our buffer tank was losing, I used the thermal imaging camera to measure the temperatures at different points. The incoming water from the heat pump was between 31 to 32 degrees centigrade. The water leaving the buffer tank to the central heating system was around 27 degrees. That's a 4 degrees centigrade loss in temperature just from the buffer tank alone. While I appreciate that thermal imaging cameras have got their limitations and may not measure copper pipe temperatures 100% accurately, the differential is clear enough to see. A 4 degree loss has a big impact on our system's performance because it delivers cooler water than it should to the radiators and underfloor heating and the heat pump has to compensate for that loss by running longer or at high temperatures which increases energy consumption. To estimate our personal financial impact of this heat loss, we need to consider our seasonal coefficient of performance or the SCOP, which is 2.7. In February 2025, our electricity cost is 25.76p per kilowatt hour. And based on our calculations using this tariff over a typical heating system from October to April, this adds up to a financial loss of roughly 170 pounds per year in heat that's been generated, but then blended down and which has never made its way into our heat emitters. So if you've got a buffer tank and you're wondering if it's working as it should, it's worth looking at how it's piped and whether your system is properly balanced. Even changes in the distribution pump speed on the heat pump or central heating side 
or pipe layout can make a big difference in reducing or increasing distortion, thereby improving or decreasing efficiency. But remember, there are alternatives like volumizers that might be a better fit for modern heat pump systems. Converting from a buffer tank to a volumizer isn't a massive job, and it can make a big difference to your system's efficiency. Instead of separating the heat pump from the heating system, it simply adds extra water volume to the system. This helps stabilize the flow and temperature without the risk of blending hot and cold water. The volumizer is typically installed on the flow side of the system, meaning it stores water at the same temperature as the heat pump's output. Hot water from the heat pump flows into the volumizer and then out to the heating system without any system separation. And because there's no return flow mixing into the tank, the water stays at a constant temperature, avoiding the blending issues that plague so many buffer tanks. Don't stress if this still feels a bit technical. You don't need to be an expert, but you just need to be aware enough to ask the right questions of your installer. If you're still unsure, drop us a comment at the Renewable Heating Hub forums because we're here to help you avoid the bodge and get the cozy, efficient home you deserve. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.